everyone, welcome to another video on my solar system series. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite planet, hopefully, because we live in it, right? Earth! So let's get right into it. So let's first start with the Earth's water. And it's actually the only planet that has confirmed water. There are other planets that might have water, like Mars, but Earth is the only one that we know of that has liquid water, or that can sustain liquid water. Most of Earth's water is actually in the ocean. 97% of the water in the ocean is, well, water. And 3% of that water is salt. Now that may not seem like much, but imagine it like this. You're drinking a glass of water, and 3% of that glass of water is salt. Would you want to drink it? Probably not so tasty. 75% of Earth's water is actually salt water, which I just described. However, the remaining 25% is made up of other forms of water. Most of that remaining 25% is actually ice, and most of this ice is actually in places like Antarctica. About 97% of Earth's water is actually salt water. This is also the water in the oceans, and it's the water that tastes, you know, very salty when you accidentally drink it on the beach. Only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water, or water that you can drink, like the water over here. Of that 3%, 2.5 is actually unavailable, or at least unavailable to normal means. Most of this water is actually trapped in polar ice caps and glaciers, which means that Antarctica might actually become a hot spot if global warming does become worse. And we'll talk about global warming later in the video. A lot of this water is either water vapor in the atmosphere, or it's just way too polluted, or is so deep underground that it's inaccessible. Only 0.5% of the water on Earth is accessible to humans in normal means. And most of the 0.5% is actually groundwater, which you can probably see a chart over here. The remaining amount of fresh water that is accessible to humans by normal means that isn't groundwater is in the form of freshwater lakes. So that does mean that 0.5, only 0.5% of all the water on Earth is accessible to humans and that's why you often hear things about conserving water because we all think that there's all the water in the world but in reality there's only a tiny percentage of it that we can use. Now let's talk about the layers of the earth. First we have the layers of the atmosphere and then we have the layers of the actual earth. Let's start with the atmosphere. The atmosphere's layers are the trophosphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, the ionosphere, and then the exosphere. The trophosphere is where weather occurs, and this is also where a lot of clouds form. The stratosphere is where some clouds form, like cumulus clouds, which are the big puffy clouds that you often think of when you think of clouds, and is also where airplanes fly at. The reason why they fly at the stratosphere is because the trophosphere um, high activity can actually interfere with the airplane's course and path, and can make for a shaky ride. The mesosphere is where meteors coming from outer space burn up in the atmosphere. If the meteors don't burn up completely, they fall onto the Earth as meteorites, and these can be the size of, let's say, a big boulder, for instance. The thermosphere is actually the hottest layer of the Earth's atmosphere, however, because it's so thin that even though it's thousands of degrees hot, you don't even feel it. The thermosphere is also where the auroras, and by the auroras I mean the aurora borealis and the aurora australis, and satellites occur. The ionosphere is the next layer of the Earth's atmosphere, and this is named after the fact that it is mostly filled with charged ions. And because of this, radio waves actually travel through the ionosphere better than any other layer of the Earth's atmosphere. 
And this is where a lot of GPS communications and satellite communications for that matter actually occur. And now, do you remember the solar winds and the coronal mass ejections from the sun video? Yeah, they actually interfere with these communications because when they reach the ionosphere, they actually disturb the radio waves in the charged ions. They disturb the ions. And an ion just means an atom that has a proton and an electron, or more than one proton and an electron. The exosphere is the outermost layer of Earth's atmosphere and extends all the way to space. Mercury actually has a very thin exosphere and that's the only layer of an atmosphere that it has. And even though it has an exosphere, that technically doesn't really mean anything. So Mercury still technically doesn't have an atmosphere. Now let's talk about the layers of the Earth itself. First there's the crust, then the mantle, and then the outer core, and then the inner core. The crust is the outermost layer of Earth's layers. However, it's also the thinnest, and it's actually the layer that we are standing on right now. Next, we have the mantle, which is the thickest layer of Earth's layers. The mantle is made out of molten rock. Molten just basically means liquid rocks, but we have a special term for it, so we call them the molten rocks. And this activity actually sparks volcanoes. And here's a diagram on how volcanoes actually work. Next we have the outer core, which is another molten layer of Earth's layers. The outer core, well, is the outermost part of the core. And it is also molten, just like the mantle. But volcanic activity doesn't originate from here. And then there's the solid inner core. Yes, you heard me right, solid. The inner core is so hot that the iron and nickel, which is what we think that the Earth is mostly made out of, actually solidifies. Temperatures around here can reach the temperatures around the surface of the sun. Now, you may have heard of things like people trying to dig through the Earth and get to the other side, and you've maybe even seen records of people trying to do this. Well, that's not possible and no one will probably ever reach the other side of the Earth. The reason is because the layers are so thick that someone probably can't get through them. And also, the layers are hot. And by hot, I mean hot. The deepest that humans have ever dug is 12 kilometers. And believe it or not, that's actually not enough to escape the crust. Yeah, the crust is actually 50 kilometers thick. So not even close, you didn't even, come, you didn't even come this close, buddy. Next, let's talk about the temperature of the Earth. The average temperature of the planet is around about 15 degrees Celsius, 14.9 degrees Celsius if you want to get more specific. The Earth is 149 million kilometers away from the sun. This distance is also known as an astronomical unit. The Earth is just far away from the sun so that we're not scorching hot and burning to death, but it's also just close enough to the sun that we're not freezing to death. In other words, it's in the perfect spot where life can exist. This spot is known as the habitable zone or the Goldilocks zone because it derives from Goldilocks and the three bears. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Earth, as you can probably tell, is the only planet with life that we know of in our solar system. Mars and Venus are also possible candidates for having life. But most likely, if they do have life, it will be in the form of microorganisms, not... One day on Earth, as you probably know, is 24 hours. And one year on Earth, as you probably also know, is 365.25 days. The reason why I said 0.25 is because the days and the years are not actually perfectly aligned. Next, let's talk about something that's very special to Earth, the seasons. Personally, I like spring. The seasons actually happen because the Earth is tilted on its axis. An axis is just an imaginary line that runs through the center of the planet. And Earth's axis is actually tilted just a little bit, but at just a little bit is enough so that there's one side facing the sun closer 
then the other side, like the upper part of Earth, is facing the sun more directly and it's getting more light directly than this, than the other side. And that is what happens in season. Earth has many parts which are called spheres. First there's the atmosphere, then the geosphere, and then there's the hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the cryosphere. The atmosphere is all of the air on Earth. Around about 79% of the atmosphere is composed of nitrogen, while the remaining 21% is oxygen. There's a sliver of the atmosphere that's just the dust and isn't the decimals that is other types of gases. Most of these gases are actually argon, which almost takes up 1%. Carbon dioxide is also another gas that makes up these remaining gases, as well as methane. The rest are known as trace gases, and these include gases like neon. Next we have the spheres of Earth. The spheres include the geosphere, which is all the land on Earth, the hydrosphere, which is all the water on Earth, the cryosphere, which is all the ice on Earth, and it's a subsection of the hydrosphere, the biosphere, which is all the living things on Earth, and the atmosphere, which is all of the air on Earth. Now let's talk about a feature of the atmosphere, the greenhouse effect. If you remember from the Venus video, the greenhouse effect is basically gases that trap heat from the sun. Global warming occurs when gases like carbon dioxide collect with greenhouse gases to absorb more heat from the sun. And that is why it's called global warming. Global warming is currently an issue due to the fact that carbon dioxide and many other types of pollutants are being released from things like power plants. Trees are actually very important to help combat global warming because they collect carbon dioxide from the air and release the oxygen that is in the carbon dioxide back into the air in a process known as photosynthesis. It is our duty to try to combat global warming by doing our part in recycling, taking better care of the atmosphere, and overall taking better care of the earth. Because right now, this is the only planet that's habitable that we can live in. It is very hard to make a short video about such a wonderful planet because we know so much about it because we live on it. So I hope that I tried my best to keep this informative but also short and neat. And if you did like this video, then well, like this video. And if you like my channel, then subscribe and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I'm Nick and my goal is to feed your brain. Okay everyone, here are some great drawings that friends and family sent us. Thanks so much for your support, I really love them all.